Uh, listen, I've always loved this next guy. I always have. I uh, just, I love him. And then I saw him at Joe Torrey's golf outing. I guess that would have been late July. And I kind of got a little stiff arm. And I thought he was kidding. But he was actually like, I think this guy had a little beef with me. So I have to rectify this. It's a great time to do it. And Lee Mazzilli is here on the fan. What's happening, Maz? Hey, Brendan. Hey, is Tiki there? No, Tiki's not here today. Oh, I thought Tiki's off. So I was going to say, you know what? All the years that I've known you, and then when I saw you at Joe's event, you know, you got your own show now, and you just kind of blew me off, man. It was like, cool. No, no, no. Hold on. Or, no, no, you blew me <laughs> off. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, All times we talk on the phone. Many man, times. Like, God, want to play God. Yes, or, yes. And now it's like, you're big time, me man. You're big leaving. Okay, now hold on a sec, Lee. I, First, I, I, my feelings were hurt. I, that, well, I I know. That's why I'm like I gotta make I gotta <laughs> no, make amends here. <laughs> no. <laughs> How you doing, kiddo? I'm good, you man. Well? You look good. I saw you Friday night. I know they had you. Uh, yeah, I guess they were right side of the suite, hanging out with the boys. Uh, SNY interviewed you. Gelbs had you on. Then, of course, I watched the whole weekend, and it was just a blast. There, even even like, listen, you're almost seventy. Steve Henderson's out there taking swings. It was just. Such an he's seventy. It's just an awesome day. Well, first of all, you get oh. it, it was a fantastic day. And first of all, you're giving me three years, but I'm not there yet. So. I know, and you don't look like you're there. You got the hair, you got the tan. I got, you're I got, looking good. I got three more years to go. I know, I know, but it was a fantastic weekend. Met did a great job. Uh, you know, until you get there and see all the players there, because we all know the Yankees have history. They go back, but you know the Mets have a lot of history too. And to be in, in that, uh, you know, the locker room and see all the guys, it was special. I didn't know what to expect. I really did not. You know, you go to a few of these old-timers days, and, and it's great. Um, but to see the guys, you know, it was just it was just a great, great day. It was well, much more than I really thought we were going to get out of it. I, I'm, I'm kidding you not. Interesting. Uh, and, and, and to see my and see my buddy, I, I you know I think about him and John Stearns. I know he's um, yeah you know he's struggling a little bit, but but he said I'm coming. I, you know, I text him. He said I'm coming. I'm mm. coming. So we all we're all thinking of of, of Stearns and, uh, and our thoughts are with him. Man, it's just uh, it was just so good to see him and then uh, and everyone else. Man, I think the guys had such a such a, a, a great time and. Sunday morning was not an easy day to get out of bed. <laughs> Where you what? What did you guys do? Where'd you go? What did you do? I mean, give us some behind the scenes stories. I know that '86 <laughs> team liked to party. I don't think they still party the way they used to, but I know a few guys got after it. Uh, no, 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 no. There's, it, you know, it was, it was a lot of canes. You know, a lot of canes in the locker room <laughs> instead yeah. of bats. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, it was great, great to see Felix Mian. You yeah. Know, Joe, Joe T was there, obviously, and. Bobby V and and uh, Felix Beyond, John Matlock, um, Jay Hook, uh, Jay Hook, uh, first win, he's first win, first win. That's right. And 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 for the New York Mets, so um, and then to see the the younger old timers, you know, and to see Pedro there was great. Uh, you know, the straw. It was just it was so much fun. You know? There's no doubt. And we got a chance to, to just reminisce about times, and you know, I said this before. Our stories get longer. We lie more. Our home runs went further, and all that stuff. You know, it's just, yes, yes, it's just good old times. And 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 see Ray Knight. But you know what, Brandon? It's more like, hey, how's your family doing? Hey, I got six grandkids now. I got the, you know. It's just, it's time goes by, but you feel like you never miss a beat because we are a small fraternity. Uh, and like I said, you know, you, you may not see someone for ten years. And all of a sudden, you pick up right where you left off. This is going to sound like a an, an odd question, perhaps, but it's coming from a great place. But it's it's from a human point of view. We all go through this. Like part of me, um, I don't want to say I, I don't I don't fear getting older because if you're not getting older, you're not here. And yeah. without life, there's nothing. That's the most obvious statement that you could possibly make. But you know, I I, I would think like if you, you put the uniform on, then you looked fine. But you know, if you just feel like. Do you ever get to a point where you're so far removed from the game where you almost miss your youth to the point where, like, you really miss your youth as a former player? Does that make any sense? Well, I don't even know what I'm trying to ask, but does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, it does in a way because, uh, 
don't we all feel like that? Don't we all feel like we can do things like when we were 20 years old? Yeah. We know we, we know we can't, but we still feel like that. You know, I was talking to Terry Collins about that and Willie Randolph and, um, that same thing. It's like, you know, we know at our age, we can't do the things on a field, but, uh, we have this gene that's kind of instilled in us, that competitive drive that, you know, right now we feel like we can still go out on the field and do the job. Like we, we, we think we can go out there and, and go up there and get a hit. We know we can't, but in our mind, we believe we can, you know, so that's that competitiveness in us that will never leave athletes. And for some reason, it's a different gene that they have. It's, we believe that. And, and it's weird to think that way, but we still feel like we can go out and play and do it in our heads. We know we can't physically. Yep. Uh, yep. But in, in our minds, we'll say, I, I'll give it a shot. No, I got you. So it's Lee yeah. Bazzilli, obviously one of our own. He's from Brooklyn, born and raised, first round pick, met 73. You know, Lee, I don't, as much as the, I don't think I've ever asked you this, although I don't even think I've ever heard you talk about this. I'm curious. So you get, I think it was 14th overall, you get drafted. And not too long, you know, I think two, three years later, you're in the show. You're young. You're 21. Mm-hmm. Mets are bad. You're the man. You know, the girls want you. The guys love mm-hmm. you because they think that you're going to represent, you know, you're going to get the Mets out of the darkness. So you you had to be living at home for a couple of years. Like, to take yeah. me through. Okay, so when you, where did you first move? You went from where to where and how old were you? I just find that fascinating back then. Yeah, well, you know, back then in 70, I came up in 76, so yeah, I was a couple of years out of high school, and there Jeez. I am playing behind Tom Seaver and John Matlack, you know, it was, it was weird, you yeah. know, because in high school you're reading about them, but, um, and then 77, you know, we weren't a bad team, but we finished third in 76, and 77, we still had a good team, that Seaver, Kuzman, Matlack, Torrey, Harrelson, Grody, uh, Kingman, Stearns, um, Stearns, Stearns was there, so, it was a good team, and then and then they decided in the middle of May, uh, May of '77, to blow up the team and make all the trades. So mm-hmm. then they went to that youth thing. But uh, for me, it was you know people always ask that question, and I didn't know anything different other than playing in New York and and gr- growing up there. It was like home. You know, my first year I came up in '76 when I got called up. I was still living at home, so. You know, we 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 had we had five people in a three room apartment. You know, in Brooklyn, yeah, which was kind of cool. Um, but uh, you know, finally the final the next year when I was in the big leagues, I told my mom. I said, "Mom, you know, I got to move out." She, said, where you going? <laughs> yeah. I said, mom, yeah, yeah. I, I I got to move out. You know, it's time. <laughs> so she said, "She said, well, who's going to cook for you? You know, you, you know, are, mom, you so, are." Yeah. And who's going to do your laundry? You are, so, Mom. Said, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I said, Mom, I'll be back. And, and, <laughs> and the funny thing was I, I only moved like two blocks away, too. So <laughs> Oh, so you stayed but, in Brooklyn. Uh, I, I I didn't know if you oh, went out yeah. to Long Island. Got you. That's what I was no, wondering. No, no, no. I stayed in Brooklyn. Matter of fact, I moved to uh, Bedford Abbey. Yeah, Brooklyn. yeah. Uh, of course. Um, so, um, yeah, it was kind of special. Wow. I, I, I was very blessed. You know, just that's it. You know, to be there, grow up going to all the games, um, and then, like I said, come out of high school and a few years removed, and you're playing with all these guys that you read about and see about all the time. And, you know, Joe Torrey was my teammate, man. And, you know, first day we met was in Wrigley Field in Chicago. I got called up, and he, uh, he said to me, you know, you stay with me. And, you know, I've been with him for 45 years. You know, that's how it was. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. He showed me the ropes of the game of baseball. So, um, very, very blessed. Very, very blessed that way. So, Joe played for the cadets growing up. Who did you play for when you were a young guy? Like 15, I, 16. I, Where were you playing? I, I, well, I played for Graves End. Okay. Was the team. Yeah, I, I played, played Graves. For, yeah. uh, Gil Hodges. Yep. You know. Yep. Uh, Ty, Ty Cobb. You play against, so the, Bo- you play against the Bonnies, Lee, yeah, or no? Bonnies. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And we played in Prospect Park. Uh-huh. So I was one of one of the guys that played for like four different teams in one summer. You know, I played for every team. They all wanted you. Yeah. And it was like that, you know, back then, you know, you played 50, 60 games in the summer, which was a lot. Yes. Because in high school ball back then, you played 15 games during the season and, and the season was over. So, uh-huh. yeah, I played for them all. That's amazing. Great, uh, par- 
parade ground in Brooklyn and all Gil, over, yeah. sure. Gil Hodges field off the belt. So, you know, you're yeah, the perfect good. you're the perfect person to ask because you've you've seen it, you've been there so long, you know the organization. Let's take Tom Seaver out of it because Tom Seaver mm-hmm. is indisputably the greatest Met of all time. He's one of the best players right. of all time. Okay. If I say to Matt Mass, be outside of Seaver, the greatest Met of all time is. Who is it to wow. you? Wow. Oh man. No one has ever asked that question. Well, that's what I do. I ask unique questions, Maz. Yeah. That's why you, you, you I, wanted to come I, on I, my show. I didn't want to come on your show. I was forced to come on your show. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. Fair uh, enough. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't have to think. Who do you? Who would you pick? Well, and I'm going to throw names out before, you know, the little process. Here. Obviously, you know, Keith mattered tremendously. You got it. I I might, I'm, off the top of my head, I might say Mike Piazza. Like, off the top of my head. Yeah. Piazza. Yeah. David Wright. It's, it's Piazza. It's Wright. Well, it's very, uh, it's very generational, you know. So, you know, you go into the last 20 years. Yeah, you're going to say that. Sure. Yeah, but you know, hold on, Lee. Lee, sure. but Lee, but Lee think about sure. this. But the Yankee stuff is generational, too. We all say Babe Ruth. I know it's all generational, but there's generally a consensus. I feel like the Mets, there, there's not. And it's a little different because Piazza came from somewhere else and David Wright got hurt just when he was on a Hall of Fame trajectory and Reyes moved on. And it's a tough answer, but I, I, yeah. need, I need your answer, Lee. Stop dodging. I, mean, I don't know. Let's go. No, I, I, I mean, it's depending if it, depending if it's uh, homegrown. Um, I, and I put Piazza up, which store up there, Keith. Um, I'm trying to think of the guys in you know Gil Hodges is one, mm-hmm. uh, although he's a, as a uh, manager. No, I got you. Uh, um, I still think Jerry Kuzman is, is a name to be reckoned with, and one of my favorite teammates of all time. Love playing with with Coos, uh, guys like that. Uh, am I missing someone? You didn't say Crane Pool. I mean, I'm just throwing names Crane out Pool. to be fair. Absolutely, to every, yes, yep. yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Crane Crane is a is a, a big part of, of the Met history. Uh, no, no question, I agree on that. But if you're asking guys that that were, you know, teenage teenagers in the '60s, you're, you're going to name. Uh, or seventy early seventies, you're going to go back to the sixty nine Mets that were there. Und- team, understood. You know? Understood. No, yeah. I, I get that. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've heard you talk about this in the past. I certainly want to give you a pop. I know the the foundation for your brother, the Fred Mazzilli Foundation. Uh, it's a big one this year, tenth anniversary. Why don't you tell us about that? I want to get you guys some uh, more traction. Yeah, thank you. Know, yeah. yeah, yeah. I lost my 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 brother to cancer, uh, lung cancer, about ten years ago. It was a hard, hard, hard time in my life, and it was uh, I lost my best friend in the world. Mm. And my sister and I um, decided that we wanted to do something in his honor, and so we started this foundation, his foundation, which we supply free lung screening testing, uh, free CT scanning for uh, people that uh, New York Presbyterian and Brooklyn Methodist, and um, you know they think. Uh, of lung cancer as a smoking disease as self-inflicted, which is far from the truth because it's more than doubled in breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer. You can put those combined and more people die from lung cancer. So we have an event on September September 13th, and you can go to our website. It's fredlmazzillifoundation.com, and they can buy tickets. We have a lot of celebs coming. We have a golf tournament on uh, October 3rd as well. So mm. they go to the website. And uh, we we are a uh, – it's a labor of love for my wife and my sister and my family because we're the ones that, you know, we lick the envelopes, put the stamps on, get all the stuff together. Yep. And uh, now we're trying to get into the new age of, of computer. So yep. to make it easier for people to come out. But it's a great foundation. Like I said, it's, a, it's really a labor of love and anything that we can do to give uh, free medical attention to people. Uh, they can go to uh, the Brooklyn Methodist at New York Presbyterian and get a free lung screening test. And that's what it's all about. Um, you know, we, 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 we go in for colonoscopies. We get all the tests done, but mm-hmm. people forget, hey, Brandon, have you gotten a, a CT scan? And you're going to say what are, you, what are you talking no, about? No, Why would I? Yeah, yeah, I have not. No, yeah. the other stuff you I know, have. But no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 prostate and all that stuff. So we just want to, we're really just trying to bring awareness. And uh, my motto for my brother's foundation, and I've had some really nice people that, that will sponsor, have sponsored this, is that whatever you give today is more than I had yesterday. 
That's so good. He gave me ten dollars today. That's ten dollars more than I had yesterday. And if you give me thousand dollars, that's more. whatever people can give and donate and come to the event is a great event. It's September thirteenth at the Hard Rock at Yankee Stadium, mm-hmm. and also on, on October third. We may have to get you out there. We we have a golf tournament. Mm. Um, Hmm. That's going to be in that. So it's on the it's on the website. Yeah, I yeah. I'll, I'll come out, leave some divots. Uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll mess up the course for you. Me and Teak will uh, will hack it up for you, Lee. Yeah, we're down. But it's a it's 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 a great event, and just like I said, uh, you know, I went through a difficult time with this with with my brother because you know he was young, and as you know, I, you know, I always told my wife my wife that you know we were supposed to grow old together. You know, yeah. and it just didn't happen. So, um, if we can help someone, um, then it's it's a job well done. So uh, it's a That's good awesome. cause. We have a lot of fun. We're gonna have uh, Joe Piscopo there. He's gonna come. <laughs> we got Saron. We got we got Vinny Pastor from The Sopranos. Yeah, the Imperioli so showed up. I saw him. Yeah, Imper- yeah, yeah. yeah. Ojo. Oh, yeah. Uh, Len Detta, tough little Scott Shannon, who works at your station. I love Scott. No, Scott. Yeah, he's Scott, a member Scott over at, uh, he plays over at Westchester, Scotty Shannon. Well, yeah, he's also a member of the Hall of Fame. Well. 